Do you have a broken appliance cord? Don't bother calling the Maytag repairman. We can fix it, and I'll show you how. Now before we get started, let's take a quick look at the tools and supplies we're going to need to complete this project. First off, obviously we're going to need a replacement cord. Now you could run out to your local hardware store and pick up a new one if you want, but why spend money if you don't have to? If you're able, just do what I did here and salvage one off something else. Now this particular cord was salvaged off a project I hope to complete a little later this summer. I will be uploading a video of that project, and you're definitely not going to want to miss that one, I promise, so stay tuned. Now you'll also need a pair of wire crimpers, a pair of linesman pliers or something to cut the cord with, a soldering gun and some solder, a heat gun, some heat shrink, and last but not least, a can of Red Bull. So let's kick this pig and get started. First off, cut the plug off the old cord and throw that plug away. Next, separate the three individual strands of wire that are inside the cord. The middle one should have a green jacket on it and that's your ground wire. The other two are going to be your hot and neutral. You'll want to make a note here, either mental, write it down, mark the cord, however you want to do it, so you know which strand goes to which side of the plug. That way when you connect the new plug, you'll have the polarity correct. Next, grab your box of heat shrink and slide a larger piece of heat shrink over the cord. We'll also be adding heat shrink to the individual strands of wire, but we'll be doing that here in just a few minutes. The next step is very important. Go ahead and grab your can of Red Bull and take a drink. This will help keep you motivated for the rest of the project. Go ahead and grab your wire crimpers and strip back the jacketing on the individual strands of wire. You want to strip back about three quarters of an inch or so. Next, grab your replacement cord and basically repeat the same process you just did. Separate the strands and then strip them back about three quarters of an inch or so. Now, if you're using a salvage cord like I am, you're going to want to inspect the cord for any damage. And if you find any, just cut that part off. Now don't forget to put some heat shrink over the individual strands of wire like I'm doing here. Now we're just about to start soldering, but you're going to want to twist the ends of the wire so they stay nice and straight. And we're almost there. If you need to, take another drink of Red Bull. Next, match up each individual strand of wire from the old cord and the new cord and twist each one together. Now don't forget to refer to your notes, whether they were mental or you wrote them down or however you're recording them, to make sure that you're matching up the individual strands of wire correctly. And now for the fun part. Grab your soldering gun, some solder, and get ready to melt some metal. Now soldering on top of a bucket isn't exactly ideal, but just use whatever you have. Now, if this is your first time soldering, don't worry, there's not much to it, and I'll help you out. Now the first tip to keep in mind is actually about one step back when you were twisting the wires together. Now when you twist these wires together, you don't want to put them so close together that the jacketing actually touches or is really close. You want to keep that separated by about maybe a half inch or three quarters of an inch of exposed copper wire. Otherwise, you're just going to melt the jacketing when you start soldering. Now I'm going to zoom in here so you can take a closer look at what's actually going on. First off, you'll want to be sure to keep the wires separated so you don't accidentally solder two wires together. Now I find the easiest way to solder wire together like this is to hold the tip of the soldering gun on the underside of the copper wire and lift up gently and then place the solder on top of the wire. Squeeze the trigger and as the copper wire heats up, the solder will melt into it flowing like the mighty river Styx. I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of the law. Lawman is putting in to my running and I'm so far from my home. Oh mama, I can hear you a crying, you're so scared and all alone. Hangman is coming down from the gallows and I don't have very long Now that the soldering is complete, go ahead and slide the heat shrink that's on the individual strands of wire in place, grab your heat gun and get those sucked down, and then finally slide that larger piece of heat shrink over the whole splice, grab your heat gun again, get that sucked down, and we're done. Now, while I put this freezer back in place, I want to mention one thing. When you're soldering, 
you usually want to use a product called Flux to go along with it. But you know what? I left it at my shop and I was just too lazy to drive across town and get it. So I just went for it anyway. Now here's where I got my leg smashed against the freezer and whatever was behind it. You can probably skip that step. Almost got it. Just got to weasel it back and forth a few more times. Yep, get it lined up. Rock it back and forth. Make sure I'm not smashing anything like my leg again. And we're almost ready for the moment of truth. It's the final today. No. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for sticking around to the end. Now Father's Day is just around the corner and I want to take this opportunity to talk about my father and the influence he's had on my life. My dad owns and operates an automotive repair shop in Northern California, and growing up I spent a lot of time there. In fact, my dad is the first person to ever put a tool in my hand, and he's the first person that ever bought me a tool as well. In fact, some of those same tools were featured in this video you just watched. I've had some of them for over 20 years. My dad taught me a lot. He taught me how to fix things and how to build things with my own two hands. And if it wasn't for him giving me that base skill set when I was a kid, giving me the knowledge and confidence to do the things that I can do now as an adult, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. And Dad, since you're an automotive electrician, and since this video is about electrical repair, this video is dedicated to you. Happy Father's Day. Now as I mentioned earlier, my dad still owns and operates his shop in Northern California. So if you're ever driving through California heading up the coast, maybe you're on your way to Oregon and your car breaks down Humboldt County area, anywhere near Eureka. Go ahead and give my dad a call. He'll help you out. Now, as I mentioned, my dad does specialize in automotive electrical repair, but really he can fix just about anything. And if it's something he can't take on, he knows everyone in town. He'll point you in the right direction. The name of my dad's shop is Canapix Auto Electric. It's in Eureka, California, and I'll leave the address and phone number at the end of this video. So I started out For God knows where But I guess I'll